If you don't live under a rock, you've probably heard of an absolutely phenomenal game called Hollow Knight. Now this Metroidvania came out several years ago and it was so widely received by community because of its fantastic boss fights, amazing biome design and just overall smooth gameplay. It's pretty much a 10 out of 10 game. But what happens after you play this game and you want more? You want to get that fix again? Well, I have another game here for you, and it's called Death's Gambit Afterlife. Now, Death's Gambit came out in 2018, I think, or 2019. And Death's Gambit Afterlife, which is kind of like a revamped version of it, came out in 2021. Now, this game is pretty much exactly like Hollow Knight in the sense that it is a spectacularly well-designed Metroidvania. But unlike Hollow Knight, this Metroidvania is about 50% Souls-like, 50% Metroidvania. Whereas I'd say Hollow Knight is probably 90% Metroidvania, 10% Souls-like. Regardless, this has the same positive features. Great biome design, great boss fights, and overall fantastic gameplay that will help you scratch that Metroidvania itch after playing Hollow Knight. So let's talk a little bit about biomes then. There's a huge diversity in the biomes in Death's Gambit Afterlife. There's a forest biome, a Tron biome, a underwater biome, uh, an underground biome, an air biome. Everything exists and it's they're all really well designed, very diverse. And they, some of them even have special mechanics like the one that we're currently watching is the Tron biome. And basically you get you get to switch polarities you either get to stay blue or red but if you're blue you do less damage to blue enemies so you have to attack blue enemies in the red state so that's a cool little feature of this biome now in another biome you know like for example the snow biome you get a lot of uh, monsters that produce icicle shards and those icicle shards come after you to try and damage you right so each biome kind of has their own unique enemy design with unique abilities that match that biome overall really well done um well, the one thing i'm really happy to see is that it's not a very linear biome none of the biomes are very linear and because of that we also have a map to help us navigate because sometimes especially for people like me who are directionally challenged need that map desperately especially when they're forking left, right, center, up, down, hidden passage, you know, all of that stuff. I need a map to help me navigate it and we've got it. So the biomes, although they are massive and although they are pretty expansive and non-linear, you won't feel super lost because you have that map to help aid you. And there's also another variable with the biome design and that is the verticality okay like you can see here for example and in the previous biome when we were kind of like in an air biome there's a lot of um the classic metroidvania elements right where you're going up down left right in all sorts of directions um dodging things dodging attacks attacking while you're in the air dashing while you're in the air all of that happens here in Death's Gambit Afterlife, just like in Hollow Knight. So we're getting a lot of that same itch getting scratched by this game. The boss fights are not only fair, but they're all very varied and have different mechanics to make them all feel extremely unique. Um, so for example, this Dark Knight boss that we're fighting right here, he's got a lot of like really cool slashing attacks and then he sometimes morphs into this like demon thing that comes on from the ground whereas another boss like for example the by surge the lightning lurker this dude is just like the biome that he's in right so basically i'm in the blue mode when he's in the red mode that's the only way you can really do significant damage to him and if he switches to the blue mode then i have to go into the red mode so he's got some of that mechanic happening, right? And already watching these two bosses side by side, you see that their attacks are completely different. The Eldritch Inquisitor, which is from the kind of the blood Castlevania biome. This thing does a lot of um, AOE range attacks and blood attacks. You kind of have to dodge while, uh, while you're fighting the boss. Sometimes you even get bosses where you can fight them again 
after you've killed them and you do this in the heroic mode like for example when we're fighting ion here this is in the heroic mode so after we do that we kind of get i guess the pride of defeating the boss in a harder mode it's kind of like a a souped up challenge of the boss when you defeat some of these bosses they even become npcs later on in the game where you can learn abilities from them. So here Ion teaches four different halberd and spear abilities. That's super cool. The diversity in the game is huge. When you level up your character, you feel like you're making meaningful progression when you put in the various stats for the character. Now the stats are pretty um, consistent with what we find in a lot of Souls-like games, right? You have vital vitality, strength, finesse, endurance, intelligence, so when we're putting in all these points, right, you can kind of focus in depending on what kind of weapons you want to use. You want to use strength weapons, you want to use uh, finesse weapons, you go and do that. Now to further increase the customizability of your character, there are four different tabs of um, skill points that you can put your attributes in. So you have the general tab, which every single character gets. And then before you start the game, you get to choose a class. Now, what that class is, you it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to be a mage and do range damage? Do you want to do um, finesse damage like an assassin? Do you want to swing a huge hammer? Do you want to swing a great sword? What do you want to do? So you choose your first class before you start the game. And then partway through the game, you get to choose a second class that will help synergize with that first class. That's really cool. Like I haven't seen that in a lot of different Souls games, but I think that is really great for replayability because you can make so many different types of builds with so many different weapons and armors and class one and two combinations. Um, so this is a double thumbs up for me. I absolutely love this mechanic in games. Now, we've pretty much talked about, you know, the basics of the game. We've talked about the excellent biome design. We've talked about the awesome bosses. We've talked about the overall feel. Now the game itself is just so smooth. Some people say that the fighting is a little bit slower than what it should be. And it is slower than Hollow Knight. If you're used to the quick stab stab attacks that you get when you play Hollow Knight, you might not get that here. But that doesn't mean the combat isn't great. It is very responsive. The parrying window is really good it's you know it's not incredibly difficult but it's also not incredibly easy it's just perfectly done so if you want to parry go for it you're going to be able to do it the gameplay itself super responsive and there's only positives to say about this game if you have another itch to play after um, hollow knight this is the game for you and if you guys like this review there's more to come on the channel, more recommendations like this. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys next time.